Hi everyone, welcome to a review video with Kim Tech. My name is Kim. Today I'll be reviewing the TP-Link Deco XC5300 mesh Wi-Fi router after having been using them for one month. This feedback is based on my personal use with security in mind since I am CISSP certified. All links will be in the description box below along with timestamps so you can skip to the sections you want. If you haven't seen my unboxing and setup video, I'll also include it down below for you. Okay, let's get on with the review. Let's start out with the environment this setup is in. Our home is 2,264 square feet with a secondary family room on the second floor. There are 15 total devices online at once and three are usually streaming at the same time. We bought the TP-Link Deco XC5300 3-pack from Costco for $349.99 US dollars and it advertises that it can cover up to 7,200 square feet with seamless Wi-Fi coverage and up to 200 devices. So check and check. Since the set is a 3-pack, it came with 3 Wi-Fi router units. We set one as the main Wi-Fi router and the other two as the extenders, which are now called satellite units. I've been wanting a mesh Wi-Fi router for some time now due to the seamless Wi-Fi transition feature between the extender and the main router, which is super cool and convenient. We finally made the trip to Costco last month to buy the TP-Link Deco XC5300 after considering the cost, performance, and return policy. So for our old setup, the main Wi-Fi router was with the TP-Link Archer AX3000. And we had one extender, which was with Netgear AC1900 Wi-Fi range extender. Now, during my research of replacing our Wi-Fi router to meet our requirement of convenience and coverage, I ran into a major security concern with TP-Link mesh Wi-Fi router products sending to third party prior to me buying this, the XC5300. However, I wanted to see for myself as I'm the type that like to verify and confirm the facts especially for something that I find important. If I find that my traffic are being sent to a third party without me authorizing it, then I would just return the product, which is why we bought the TP-Link from Costco because I'm sure if you shop at Costco, you know how amazing their return policy is. Before we go any further, I want to note that my home setup and layout are different from yours. So I can only speak from my experience at my current location, which is why it's so important to consider a good return policy when making any big purchases if possible. Also, I didn't test the wire backhaul setup since it's not something that most home can easily do and my home is definitely not fit for it without me having to add some network drops. Okay, I'm going to break my review into three parts. One is going to be ease of setup, two is going to be speed and consistency, and three is going to be the security concern. Let's start with my feedback on the setup. Setup was painless and super easy, especially for the two satellite units. If you have watched my unboxing and setup video, you probably have seen the satellite unit automatically set itself up without me having to do anything except for plugging in the power, which definitely put me in awe. As for the speed and network performance, we didn't have any issue. The Deco AX5300 supports the Wi-Fi 6E standard, which allows Wi-Fi to use the 6 gigahertz spectrum, giving it a true tri-band connectivity. The 2.5, 5, and 6 gigahertz instead of the split 5 gigahertz of 1 and for the lower channel and 5 gigahertz 2 for the upper channel. This means that your router will simultaneously establish three separate connections, one on the 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz band, 
and another one on the 6 gigahertz band, dramatically reducing network congestion and giving you much faster speeds, but at the cost of a reduced range for the 6 gigahertz spectrum. I'm going to post the specs of this model somewhere on the screen here so you can see. On our old setup, our devices would connect to either the main Wi-Fi router or the extender, depending where it, they were sitting. For example, the Nest doorbell and Nest outdoor camera would be on the extender Wi-Fi, while the Ring outdoor camera would be connected to the main router. When the extender goes down, we had to manually connect those two devices to the main Wi-Fi router if they hadn't been connected before. Not a big deal, but a bit inconvenient. And having a mesh Wi-Fi router is supposed to fix this issue. To my surprise, the AX5300 has been working well. I can walk anywhere around my home and not have any issue. Also, with the mesh Wi-Fi router system, I no longer have four SSIDs. Two for the main router because of the dual band of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and two more for the extender, totaling four. It's now only showing one SSID, which is great because my husband doesn't have to ask me which one to connect to and goes on saying, why do we have so many SSID? Problem solved. Speed has been good for the past month as well. Unfortunately, there is no fiber in my area, so I have to make do with cable. As for the consistency, my husband has not been complaining and calling me for technical support, so that's good as well. All jokes aside, my backyard Nest camera hasn't dropped once since this installed. On to my hesitation on purchasing the TP-Link mesh Wi-Fi router. Is it secure? Is my data being forwarded to a third party? As you can see here, I don't have any subscription with TP-Link or its home protection third party. So it shouldn't be sending my info to Avira to start this test or fact checking. I knew there's a way for you to monitor outgoing traffic, but I never set one up for a home setting before. So with some browsing on the internet, I found the process using OpenDNS. And since this is for home use, it's free. Yay. It's worth noting that if you read the article from xdadevelopers.com, they use NextDNS for their test. But I wanted to use OpenDNS as I've heard of them before and also they are from Cisco which is a very reputable in the IT industry. I might use NextDNS later on just to see if there's a difference. But NextDNS has a cap of 300,000 queries per month for their free version. And since I didn't know how many queries we were going to do a month, I wanted to start with OpenDNS first. What is OpenDNS, you may ask? OpenDNS is an internet security company that offers DNS services for internet navigation and web security solutions under Cisco. As mentioned earlier, this is free to use for home purposes, personal use, and not commercial. You can find more about OpenDNS or DNS on the internet. Now, why are we doing this process? This process of rerouting the DNS means having traffic goes through OpenDNS instead of my ISP, which stands for Internet Service Provider. So OpenDNS can aggregate the report and tell me where my traffic are going. However, since this is a free version, it doesn't tell you which devices such as your computer or cell phones the traffic come from. It only shows the domain or website that we are trying to access, which is fine for us because I just needed to know where my traffic is going. And the setting up of OpenDNS was simple. The only problem was in the beginning when I was trying to find the steps on how to set this up. For some darn reason, the instructions 
were not available on OpenDNS, but luckily TP-Link has instruction on how to reroute the DNS. And lucky for you, I'm including all links in the description box below, so you have them all in one place. You're welcome, and so please don't forget to click that like button. But if you want me to do a separate video on how I set up my DNS, feel free to put in the comment section below. If there are enough requests, I'll definitely do a separate video on it. Okay, results time. I set up OpenDNS on March 19th, but logs didn't start aggregating until March 20th because it takes a bit for the new DNS to sync and see the traffic. I did multiple exports since March 20th because the logs are only for 14 days. Based on the Reddit post and the article from XDA developers, they saw traffic going to Avira. I have all the exported logs up here and I want to note that the export I did is only of the first page, so it will only show the top 200 sites that are most pinged or accessed. As we can see from reviewing the top 10, I do not see the traffic mentioned from either post. However, we have a ring floodlight and it pings back to its server like crazy. Let's search for Avira on each of these reports and nothing shows up in terms of Avira or Home Shield or SafeThings.Avira. Not even TP-Link shows up here. So I'm going to show you my results from the OpenDNS portal. So that way you can see all the pages and what the results are. So we're going to search for Avira and nothing. And just to make sure that this is working, I'm going to search for Ring. And as you can see, Ring does show up. So we're going to go to the next few pages here, searching for Avira. Here I'm going to search web, as you can see, it shows up, nothing for Avira. So for my situation, it doesn't look like it's sending out any traffic to Avira. We're going to go to the very end here and it seems like I can't go anymore. I did a firmware update to 1.1.8 build 2022 11.21 release 36691 when I first set up the XE5300. There was another firmware update recently, about a week or so ago, and my current version is now 1.1.11 build 2023-0302 release 51700. Overall, I think that the TP-Link Deco XE5300 does its job without any security compromises that I can see. I'm going to continue monitoring the traffic from the OpenDNS setup or maybe change to NextDNS to make sure that they don't pull a fast one on me. Update alert. How should I say this? I was at the tail end of editing this video when I switched over to NextDNS a few days ago. Because I really hate giving people advice when I feel like I haven't done a thorough job of researching while knowing there's still something else out there. If I don't know about it, well, that's a different story. Anyway, so back to me switching over to NextDNS. Because of the Reddit post and the XDA article, I was hyper-focused on searching for Avira on my DNS logs rather than other keywords such as TP-Link, for example. <sighs> and guess what I found? There's something that's calling back to Home Care Cloud from TP-Link. So I checked my DNS logs from OpenDNS and it's there on the second page with 120 requests within about 14 days of logs. When I looked up what is Home Care Online, 
It's a built-in service feature that includes antivirus, parental control, and QoS, quality of service, for your TP-Link routers. The website promotes that it is completely free in comparison to its competitors. But the strange thing is, the Deco XE 5300 is not under the supported model list based on the same website. It makes no sense to me. This is very unfortunate because I cannot trust TP-Link with other Wi-Fi routers or Deco models because as you can clearly see, unless I'm blind here, that the XE5300 is not on the supported list. But I see my older Wi-Fi router, the AX3000 on here, just great. It gets better. Because I cannot disable this oh so amazing home care feature from the web portal or the Deco app. And talking about the Deco app, Avira actually showed up on my next DNS logs when I had my app open. So why didn't Avira show up on my open DNS logs? I think that Avira is triggered when I open my Deco app. And I cannot recall opening that app more than once or twice max after setting up my OpenDNS. And as you may recall, OpenDNS failed to show me the next page of less than 10 requests. I tried it again today and cannot get to the page of domains of less than eight requests. So there are missing logs here. Now I have to find another mesh Wi-Fi router for my home. I know that for most, this security concern is not an issue for them. But I just cannot have the TP-Link Deco XE 5300 in my home. Not because I think I'm important that they are specifically tracking me or that I'm doing something shady that I don't want people to know. It's merely the principle of being tracked and monitored that I don't appreciate and for TP-Link to not be clear about it because the box says home shield, not even home care or the fact that TP-Link does not give us the option to opt out of this. So I cannot recommend this product or any of TP-Link's Wi-Fi routers and or Deco products without mentioning to use it at your own discretion because you are being monitored. Now before everyone gets yourself tied in a knot, I want to put a big disclaimer out there is that unless you are going to subscribe to TP-Link's Home Shield security. By the way, Home Shield and Home Care are different. Then I see no problem with this because you are paying for the subscription for them to monitor the traffic for you. But if it is something you didn't sign up for, and that's where my problem lies because I did not sign up for this monitorization. Another food for thought is I'm pretty sure that TP-Link knows about this and that they probably reduce the ping time for most users to not catch it because as you saw the request counts from my OpenDNS and NextDNS, there is so much less than what the Reddit post of 80,000 and XDA's article of 42,000 within 24 hours, which these two posts are over a year old. Also, if you're curious, the Deco XC5300 is currently not Matter compatible. Please let me know how you like your TP-Link Deco XC5300 if you have one installed at your home. Or have any of you returned yours because you found security issue with it like your traffic was being sent to a third party. Hope you all find this video helpful. If you do, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it down below. Thank you so much for watching and have yourself a nice day or night wherever you are my buddies. Until next time, bye!